On June 29th, 2016, this is Socialist Number 19, Day 5, Part 1, Greeting Bridge friends. Welcome back, and it's good to be back with another lesson where we're going to take a look at takeout doubles and overcalls. Now, we know that as emerging bridge players, it is important to compete, not to sell out on the auction, and knowing when to compete, of course. We, on our last session, we talked about the street smart bridge player. In fact, let's take a look and see what we've covered in this course. We started off by taking a look at high card points, losing trick count when we have a partnership fit or we have a really good suit, suit quality of nine or 10 or more. And as a partner, when we have a fit and we start taking a look at having our cover cards, that is aces and kings as responder to support our partner, to give those quick tricks which we can count sometimes more effectively than high card points to see just how many tricks we need to make a game. Typically, we like to be in four of a major, hearts or spades, we need 10 tricks, so it's a book of six plus four more. And no trump, we're not getting any roughing opportunities, but then we only need a book and three more, nine tricks. So knowing about our losers and also our cover cards are very useful. Okay, then in lesson number two, we took a look at looking and listening to the auction, going beyond our 13 pace cards, those 13 cards in our hand, and kind of being aware of what's going on around the table with our partner and hopefully our opponents too. And then we took a look at the inferences from the leads. Yes, we want to listen to that auction and see where the aggregate points are. We know there's 40 points in the deck, in the pack, and then if we hear a right-hand opponent open with 12 points or more, or a left-hand opponent has six points or more, depending upon high, how highly they bid, the points in our hand, we can get a good assessment of where our partner's honors might be. And depending upon what the lead is, what that might mean. Then we took a look at competing at a big level. That is making a preemptive bid, making a bid that's not at the same level as the opponents, but going up, up, and away, to the two, three, or four level to be obstructive, to interfere, and to try to keep them from finding their best auction. We'll get into that in a little bit. This lesson then is going to be on overcalls and takeout doubles. We'll get into that in just a little bit. And our last lesson that we covered on our last session was on being that street smart bridge player, integrating everything that we've talked about and having not just a self-awareness, but a situational awareness of what's going on around the table in the ecosystem. Well, okay, let's go ahead and take a look at why we make overcalls. Kind of like the preempts in one way is that we're looking to have a partnership fit. And if we have the master suit, the highest ranking suit at a specific level, the spade suit, then yes, that's nice if we can find a fit specifically in that suit. But fit in another suit, that's good too. Because if we don't have the high card points, if we have the length, hey, shape matters, doesn't it? Okay, and then sacrifices. Yes, that one instance would be, is where it's a preemptive bid, but maybe we're both bidding. We both have about 20 points, their side and our side, and who's got the higher ranking suit, who's got the longer length in a suit, a sacrifice might be worth it. In other words, if we're non-vulnerable and they are vulnerable, then we can take out a little bit more risk, we can stick out our neck a little bit further, and we can use this thing we spoke about before, the rule of two, three, and four. If we are not vulnerable versus them being vulnerable, we might go down several tricks, whereas if we are vulnerable and they are not, we don't want to get too much in front of the railroad train it out. We might not be able to get out of the way when they double us, and we incur a lot of penalty under tricks for not making our auction and being vulnerable. So it can go 200, 500, 800, down three pretty quickly. Okay, then we talked about the preempts, this obstructive, which is upsetting or hopefully disrupting the opponent's accuracy. They do it to us, we want to do it to them, don't we? Lead direction, yes, we would like it when we make an overcall to have a good opportunity for our partner gets off to our suit. Now we're going to overcall hopefully with five cards or more. With five out of 13, we ought to have some honors in that suit. If you're overcalling with eight points and only jack fifth in the spade suit, you may have a fit with partner, but then again, your partner's probably thinking, that's the suit I should lead. I won't lead my suit with some honors. 
I'll leave my partner's suit and it may hurt you. So we have to use some discretion when we overcall on a five card or longer suit when it doesn't have many honors. We'll get into that shortly. Also, we can take a look at finesses, roughing, and promotion when the opponents are in the no trump on those last two. Okay, conventionally speaking, shape and strength, they do matter. And we have some bids, such as Michael's Q bid, the unusual two no trump. We won't get into those days where we can show our shape more definitively by sometimes we bid the opponent's suit. Righty bids one diamond. We bid two diamonds. It's not saying we have diamonds. It's saying we have the majors. 5-5 five, five in the majors or longer. Sometimes he'll be four in the upper of the two suits, but normally we would like to be 5-5 five, five or longer. Okay, and then we have these takeouts we've talk, said we're going to talk about there. And then two suited hands, yes, and some strong bids, Q bids. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at some of the criteria for making an overcall. We would want to take a look at the suit quality. Ideally, it does have honors. It doesn't have to always, but we're taking a risk when it doesn't. We should be aware of it. If it had a suit with, say, two of the top three honors, bingo, that's very good. Generally, we overcall with some modicum of strength. Doesn't have to be an opening hand. Remember, our right hand opponent has already made an opening bid, so we're looking to make an overcall. And the bidding level, obviously, that would be mattering too. So if they open at one spade and we have to go to the two level, well, that's two clubs, two diamonds, whatever. If they open preemptively with two spades, now we got to come in at the three level, so we would want more points the higher they have opening. Okay. And then there's this notion of we talked about with sacrifices, part scores and pushing up the auction dependent upon here again, that rule of two, three, and four, the vulnerability and those types of things. Lastly, we want to take a look at the law of total tricks. Now we won't get into that more in this lesson. We've spoken about it before, but we, if you'll recall, we said was that if we have a bigger fit, then we can bid more. Typically, with neutral vulnerability and other environmental factors being the same, that would be we would bid up to the number of tricks that aggregate we have with our partners. So if my partner is overcalled with five or more in a suit, say it was one diamond, you and my partner bid one spade. If I've got three spades in my hand, then your five and my three is eight. We should be able to go to at least to the two level even if we don't have points, just on our good looks and our shape, right? If I have four, your five or more, and my four, now we should be competing up to at least the three level. Now we may be, if we've got enough points, be bidding game. That's a whole other matter. But with our length alone, we should be able to compete at that level. Once again, the rule of two, three, and four, depending on whether we're vulnerable or not, does have some impact. But the length of the fit the useful honors, that is the honors in our suit and not the opponent's suit, shortness in the opponent's suit, all those things are applicable. Well, okay, let's take a look at some other bidding criteria. The seat. Yes, the seat does matter. What's that? Well, if we're opening in the fourth seat, that's one thing. Or if there's two passes, our right-hand opponent opens in third seat and we're in the fourth seat, we kind of have a feel that only one person's got 12 points or more. If we have five or six points, and there's two passes, this person to our right must have a huge hand. So those things matter. And also, if, let's say, they open one spade, and we've got king, jack, three times in spades, I don't think that king, jack, third is going to be worth too much to you. Whereas if our right-hand opponent opened one spade, and we've got king, jack, three times, I'm feeling much better that that king has a greater chance, or at least the jack, to get a trick. Maybe both. Okay, and also this notion about when it's in the balancing or pass out seat. If we have three passes, fine. Or if our left hand opponent opened one club and it's got two passes, even though we don't have 13 points, we now are more likely to want to find a bid because our right hand opponent doesn't have six points and our left hand opponent doesn't have more than 21 points, so our partner's got something. We might wait to borrow a king as we'll talk about now borrow three points from our partner to kind of keep the auction alive not to sell out at one club my goodness make them earn that auction right okay obviously the bidding style matters too if you have a partner 
that has an adversity to risk and not interested in that much reward, maybe you have to compliment the partner or maybe you have to talk to them off to the side and say, part, what's going on? We're selling out on a lot of these auctions. Don't we want to make them earn it? Maybe they'll go down and get set if we bid them up a little bit. So bidding style is important because this is a partnership game. The inferences based upon the shape, the aggregate high card points and all, we can begin to make assessment as being that knowing the inferences and being a street smart bridge player. Also, we can take a look at that street smart bridge player as far as what is the tells. Do they take a long time to make a bid, shrug, some things? Not supposed to, but we as the opponents, we can make benefit of that. We cannot, for our partner though, we cannot use those unauthorized information signals whether they mean to or not to make a bid. Partnership trust, oh yeah, that's huge, isn't it? So if we know our partners always keeps it in the middle of the fairway, doesn't make any psychs, is a very um, solid player in terms of having their bid and bidding their hand, that is helpful versus not being so sure is when they make a weak jump and when they make a strong jump. <laughs> you don't want that. Um, and sure, if we are in the pass out balancing seat and we borrow the king from our partner to keep the auction alive, hopefully our partner doesn't keep rebidding, singing like a canary when they've passed because we had to borrow a king. Now, they want it back. Well, <laughs> we can't both hold that mysterious virtual king. And, of course, Sykes. We sometimes think, well, we might make it difficult for the opponent, but like the boomerang, it may come back and hit you or your partner or both. So Okay, let's go ahead and head for the table and play a couple hands. But before we do, maybe a little chalk talk at the table, get kind of warmed up, and we'll have East be the dealer and the opener to start. So how about if they open one diamond, and we in the south, well, maybe don't even have a lot of points. Eight, seven, maybe as low as six, but a good six. Good six meaning our honors in our five card or longer suit. So let's say in the spade suit, we have ace, king, five times. Well, there's a good possibility for four tricks, maybe five. If our partner's got queen third or something like that in the hand, we have an eight card fit. So that might be enough for many of you to open, even vulnerable versus not. Now, if your partner has gotten exuberant and starts making a lot of big bids as though you have an opening hand, well, you might want to talk to them, but remember, we're overcalling, and one of the things we do it for is to be competitive. Now, over here in the west seat, if they've got, oh, let's say, ace, queen, four times in the heart suit, uh, they can't really come in at the two level. Even if they have nine points, they need ten points or more to make that five and dime bid, as we call it. So, making a Overcall, especially in the master suit, the spade suit, can be very beneficial. But let's say we don't have that many points. Let's say we don't have seven, nothing on the other suit. Let's say it's a five, three, three, two, and just pretty much nothing going on there on the other suits. Okay, a little bit less. Rather than a king, let's go ahead and make that a queen. Well, yeah, I'd rather be an ace-queen jack five times or ace-queen ten five times, but a modern treatment, a lot of people will make this. Now, if you are more solid in your bidding, you'd probably say not vulnerable or at least neutral vulnerability, both sides vulnerable. But you kind of get the feel what we're talking about is overcalls do not have to require 12 points. Now, if you're playing in American Contract Bridge League and you fill out your convention cards, you say overcall start at eight points or seven points or six points or whatever, maybe 10 points if you like to do a very conservative style. Well, okay, let's go ahead and try another hand. How about if they open with one heart? Well, now we can't come in and just bid two clubs or two diamonds with our eight or nine points, six points for sure. Uh, now we're required to have 12 points. And I would hope that the suit is pretty good. I don't think I would 
feel very comfortable if it was jacked five times in that diamond suit. But let's try something a little bit different. It's one heart. And uh, now in our spade suit, we've got king jack five times. Is that enough to overcall? No. No, it's only got four points. And they're kind of a little bit moth-eaten, aren't they? That suit is not looking that great. But let's say we have a 5-4-2, two, too. Um, maybe four cards in mind. We'll make a double tin. Not much going on in the heart suit. In diamonds, let's say it's a primary honor, which we would like. And if it's a four-card suit, even better. Length and strength in the same suit. So it's a 5-4-2-2 two, two here. So here we have the spades and the diamonds, the pointed suits. And sure, yeah, I'd say go ahead and overcall with one spade. No problemo. Here again, it makes it a harder bid for over there in the west seat. Okay, next one. Let's say they go one diamond. And this time we do have the club suit. Let's say our club suit is ace, queen, jack five times. How many points you see so far? Six, seven, one distribution for a nice suit with longer than four, one for each extra in length. That's eight points. And over in the heart suit this time, it's ace three times. Seven and one is eight. And another four is 12. Yes, maybe you've got three spades to the nothing and a singleton in the diamond. I would say fine. Go ahead and bid two clubs with a holding like this. So when we come in at the two level, we do want to have that 12 plus points. And we do want to have, certainly, a fairly good suit. Maybe it doesn't have to be this good. Maybe it's ace-jack-10 five times, and you've got some points elsewhere. But I wouldn't feel quite so strong if we had something like, oh, get rid of this ace, make that a queen, and over here, rather than having three little, let's say we've got a queen over there, Now I'm not quite so proud of this hand. Four, five, six, seven, and one is eight. Yes, we do have two points there. And two there, but I don't think those two add up to four. Give ace, yes, you've got for sure a trick. Two queens, I don't know. I don't think with quackers, the queens and the jacks, I feel quite so strongly at it. And so Bridge Hands, thank you for coming over to Bridge Hands and taking a look at part one of our episode 19 on overcalls and takeout doubles. Now we're going to get into a lot more on overcalls and then later on getting into where we don't have a five card suit but we have a reasonable opening hand or close to that and can make the takeout double. So stay tuned, come on over to Bridge Hands if you are a free member by all means, log in and take a look at part two where we have more on overcalls. Then in part three and part four, we're going to really get into takeout doubles and more of these type two doubles where you have a, a big hand and want to get a partner to help you when they have eight, nine points or more and get you a game in either a suit contract or no trump. So you know what to do. If you aren't already a member, come on over to www.bridgehands.com and sign up for membership. Get a premium membership for three months for less than $15 or go all the way with an ultra membership where you can get hundreds of hours of videos to watch for less than $50. We also have our Hands of the Week for our ultra members where you can take a look at hands played by many different people at many different tables and find the good, the bad, and the ugly. So as always, thanks for coming by Bridge Hands. I hope you have a good day playing Bridge and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.